This is the bear, this is the bear. Okay, this is just going to be a continuation from the previous video. I will show you guys two more ways on how we can get a formula for 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus da 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 plus n, alright? So, the fourth way is that we'll be using a component torque argument for this. And let me just demonstrate with an example, and you guys will see the pattern will follow along, right? So, let's say I want to just consider maybe just say four points for simplicity purpose, right? And four non-collinear points, meaning that I don't want three of the points to be on the same line, right? So four non-collinear points. I should write that down right here. And the idea is that, okay, let me just put four points right here. The question that we want to ask is that, how can we find the number of ways that we can connect these dots, right? How many segments can we draw, right? Hmm. One of the things that we can do is just go ahead and connect all the dots and then just count how many segments that we have. And we can also do this systematically. This is how we can do it. First of all, we are going to fix a point. Let me just pick this one to be the first. And from here, you can see that I have one, two, three, three ways to connect the dots, right? From here to the rest of the street. So based on this, we see that we have three segments right here. And then we can also just continue this with the same fraction. Go right here and let's just so say, okay, for this point, I'm not going to go back because, you know, that's the same segment as what we counted already. So in fact, if you fix this point, we only have one, two, two segments, right? So two more, so we just add two to it. And lastly, of course, you can just go in this right here. This is the last point that we can select because we can only have this segment that we can draw, this plus one. And of course, this point is pretty much being connected with the rest already, so this right here is it. And we have a total of six segments, right? When we have four points. And this is exactly the same thing that we're trying to do. And of course, you can imagine, if we have seven non collinear points, we will do 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 plus 6, right? Because if you have 7 non collinear points, right? Remember, the, once you've picked the first point, once you fix that, you have 6 ways to connect the dots. So it's the same thing. Okay, so not bad, right? We can count the number of segments that we can draw with 4, collinear, four non collinear points right here. Um, but is there another way that we can do it? Yes, let's take a look right here. So this is where the component torque part comes in. So once again, let's do one, two, three, four, right? Four points, four non-collinear points. Well, remember that when you have two points, you can draw a segment between them, right? And when we have four points like this, how many ways are there for us to select two points? Well, you can pick this two right here, and you can just draw a segment. You can pick this two right here, right? You can pick this two right here. You can pick this two right here. And among all that, you can just co connect the dots. And when we're talking about selection, the order doesn't matter. So this right here is exactly what we can do. Four, choose two. Four points, and you just choose two of them. And the points that you choose, you can connect the dots with that. So in another word, this right here is equal to that. And yes, four choose two is exactly 4 times 3, and then divided by 2 times 1, which is also 6. Just like this right here, it's 6, right? So that's the idea. And now, you can really imagine if you have more points, this is actually going to follow along. And the way to actually prove it, you have to use induction. But just to use the, you know, to show a formula for you guys, you know, this is a pretty good argument. And all we have to do is, I will just tell you guys 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus da 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 plus n. When we have this right here, this right here is that we have number of ways to connect two dots, right, two points, or you can just say number of uh, segments that we can have, um, number of segments that we can have when we have how many points? Remember, 3 plus 2 plus 1, when we have 3, we actually have 4 points, right? So when we have n plus 1, 
it has to be one more than this value. We must have n plus 1 non-collinear points. This counts how many segments that we can draw when we have n plus 1 non-collinear points. But when we have n plus 1 non-collinear points, this right here is exactly, you know, we can have n plus 1, choose 2. So this and that, same thing. And what's n plus 1, choose 2? This is how we can do it. You put this down, which is n plus 1, and then you go down by 1 only one time, because you don't have two terms. Right? So the next one is you multiply by n, and then in the denominator, you divide it by 2 factorial. So just like that. And of course, this is the same as that, and this is the formula that we'll see in the first few ways as well. So this is a more of a combinatorial argument for it, right? So hopefully you guess like this. Okay, number five. This is the last way I have for you guys. This is defense equations, and this is how we are going to do it. So last time we did S0. This is the partial sum, right? This is the partial sum when we have zero terms. Hmm, it's like when we put down 0 plus that, right? So of course, s0 is equal to 0. And then sn, meaning the nth partial sum, this right here, how can we do it? Well, in order for us to get the sn, we have to look at what we had previously, and that's the idea of sn minus 1, the previous term. And then we just have to add n to that. So this right here is a recursive relationship for the nth partial sum, right? So let me just remind you guys, we have 0 for the 0's partial sum, and then the next one is 0 plus 1, which is 1, and then the next one is 0 plus 1 plus 2, which is 3, and then so on, and the next one is 6, and the next one is 10, and then so on, so on, so on. So then the first way is that we find a formula based on these numbers, Right, using algebra, by using system of equations. But right here, in order for us to get to this, well, what we have to do is, this is when n equal to 3. This is when n is equal to 0, by the way. This is when n equal to 3. To get 6, you look at the previous term, and then you add the 3 to it. So that's what we mean by as n minus 1, and then add the n after that. All right? So this is the recursive relationship when n is greater than or equal to 1, all right? So that's the idea. Okay, now this is how we are going to solve a difference equation. It's very similar to how to solve a uh, differential equation with constant coefficients, and this is like the first order, all right? <laughs> okay, so here is the deal. When we have a difference equation, we are going to kind of just have a general form. So I'm going to use the analogy from differential equation. When we have, uh, let's say, first order linear differential equations with constant coefficients, we use e to the at, right, or rt, to, as a general formula, and then just kind of guess the solution and the solve for r, right? We do it right here the same way. When we have this kind of things, the idea is that the general solution, what we have to do is, we must solve, I will just put this down because now it gets the technical part. If there's any request, I will do this in detail for you guys. So this is like the homogeneous situation. Let's just look at this part, meaning that I will have Sn equal to Sn minus 1. And I, do, I just want to ignore this for now. And now we can subtract this on both sides. We are saying Sn minus Sn minus 1 has to be equal to 0. Now, to guess what this is, the idea is that Sn, and for homogeneous solution, I will just call this to be alpha n, all right? Because this is also a particular solution, and that we have to put it with the n right here. Anyway, alpha n, okay, this right here has the four r as the base now, and n as the exponent. We always use this when we have a... a maybe the first order or second order um, when we have constant coefficients, right? And the reason being is, okay, if you can just request, I'll do more videos for you guys. But here is a quick idea. For example, when you have an, uh, it's equal to 
that's a 4 a m minus 1. What we're saying is that, let's say uh, the previous term is a0, let's say this is equal to 2. What we're saying is that, first, we start with 2. Next, uh, we're doing 4 times 2, which we get 8. And then the next term is that you do 4 times the previous one, which is 32. And you see, this is really like exponential, right? Because each every time, you just multiply by 4, multiply by 4, and that's the idea. And this is the general form that we're going to use for the homogeneous situ situation. It's going to work out the same, even though you have higher order. And this right here, I'm saying higher order. Uh, this is just the first order, because n minus 1 and n, the difference between them is just 1, all right? Anyway. You can also check out my other video because I solved the Fibonacci sequence by using the same method, right? Okay, so now, alpha n, suppose that's a solution to this, which is going to be like that, right? And we can just say, okay, rn, well, this is just pretty much the same as this, so it's just rn. And then when you have n minus 1, okay, you just plug in n minus 1 into the n. So we get a minus r to the n minus 1. And our goal is to figure out what r is, right? All right, now, this is rn minus r, n minus 1. There are a few things you can do. You can divide everything by rn, r to the n, right? Because r shouldn't be 0, otherwise there's nothing to do, right? So, hmm, you can do that. And then, uh, how am I going to show you guys the work? Seriously, let's just, let's just do that. Let's divide everything by Rn. Divide everything by Rn. You, you, you know this is going to be R is equal to 1, but you know, I will show you. This is 1, and this and that is going to be R to the minus 1, and this is still 0. And now just to do this to the other side, this is 1 equal to, bring this to the other side, it becomes 1 over R. And by now, you should see that R is equal to 1, all right? But anyway, this is just a homogeneous um, situation. And I'm going to use this as a building block later on, right? Anyway, now let's look at the particular solution, meaning that I have to consider with the n now. Earlier, you just ignore this for the homogeneous, and you just kind of treat the, uh, the relationship by whatever you have right here and then the previous term, that's all. But now we have to put this into consideration. So s n minus so Sn equals to Sn minus 1 plus n. And of course, I will just move this to the other side, just like how you solve a, just like how you solve a differential equation, right? And this is equal to n. And now, this side, it's a polynomial, right? n to whatever power. So we have to just say, okay, particular solution, that will just call this to be beta n. Because this right here is n to the first power, so beta n has to be a linear um, form, right? And uh, I will just use capital A, n to the first, plus capital B for this. But here's the interesting part, the tricky part. Right here, for the homogeneous solution, r is equal to 1, meaning it's a constant. This and the b is kind of like being duplicated, right? So hopefully you guys have done some differential equation, you know what I'm talking about. If not, here's the deal. If this and one of this is being the same kind, what you have to do is, you have to look here and then multiply this by an additional n, so that you actually uh, can include everything, right? So the general form for beta is actually a n squared plus b n, right? So let me just write this down for you guys now. I'm going to plug in beta n, which is, you have to distribute this right here. I will put it right here for the Sn. My goal is to figure out a and b. So let's do it. This times that is going to be a n squared, and then plus b n, right? This right here is for Sn. And then I will have to minus Sn minus 1, meaning that I plug in n minus 1 into this n and that n, right? Well, you can just think about this and that n. But anyway, I'll do this for you guys. Minus a, and n is n minus 1 now, so I will put down n minus 1 square, and of course use the parentheses because s n minus 1 has two terms, and you add it with bn, which is b times n minus 1. 
And then on the right hand side, you make this equal to n, all right? And now this is kind of similar to the partial uh, fraction you had to solve for the coefficients. And we'll just do that real quick, right? So this is a n squared plus b n minus. Okay, let's do this in your head. n minus one squared, n squared minus two n plus one times a becomes a n squared minus two a n plus a, yeah? And then distribute this, you get plus b n minus b, and this is equal to n. And now, this and that cancel out, yeah? Because this is n squared minus a n squared. And, um, yeah, okay, that's pretty much the same. Oh, okay, b n and minus b n, this and that also cancel out. Pretty nice, huh? So now, let's see what we have. Distribute the negative things here, we get, neg we get negative negative becomes positive two a n, and then plus, distribute this in here, becomes negative a, distribute this in here, becomes positive b, like this. And on the right hand side, we have this equal to n. And now, we'll just match the coefficient. 2a n has to be equal to 1, right? So let me just put this down. 2a, 2a has to be equal to 1. They have to match the coefficient, right? This means a is equal to 1 half. And now, this right here has to be equal to 0, right? Because there's nothing here. So you just say negative a plus b is equal to 0. But you know a is 1 half already. So you know b is equal to a, which is b is equal to 1 half as well, right? So this right here, it's pretty much it. And now for the overall solution, so this is actually what the solution is, right? So I will just write down Sn for this because Sn is actually what we are trying to find. Solution is Sn, which is equal to alpha n plus beta n. All right, so let me just write this down, alpha n plus beta n. And here for the alpha n, r is equal to 1. And then we have the raised that to the nth power. r is 1, so we have the following. This is just 1 to the nth power. And now, just like how you solve a first order differential equation, there's always that constant, right? This is where you are going to multiply by the constant. So we multiply this by c, right? Like this. And then, plus bn, the particular, sorry, beta n is the particular solution, which is this. And you know a is 1 half, and b is also 1 half. So this is 1 half, and then n times n is, of course, n squared. And then we also add it with b is 1 half, and then n right here, just like this. All right, now the question is, how can we find out what c is? Because this right here is technically just a c, right? And remember, we have to <laughs> use the initial condition, just how you solve a differential equation. This is, what the differenti this is what the initial condition is. So let's see if I can fit everything here. That will make me really happy. S0, it's going to be 0 because the 0 is partial sum. And this means I will have to plug in 0 into all the n. And you see this right here is pretty much c and then plus 1 half times 0 square and then plus 1 half times 0. Uh, 1 to the 0's power is c. Anyway, c is equal to 0, right? In the end, Sn is just beta n. So it's actually just this. So I'll write this down, which is 1 half n squared plus 1 half n. And with that, we are done. This right here, it's the same as that if you multiply it out, right? Why did I show you guys five different ways to do this question? And of course, everybody will agree with me that the third way is the easiest, right? However, the easiest way may not work, may not work all the time. In my opinion, this right here is the most powerful way when you are trying to solve a difference equation. When you have any kind of recursive re relationship, this is the most powerful way to do it. And this is just really cool. I like it so much for the combinatorial way. And in fact, the next video will be based on this kind of idea. But anyway, uh, hopefully you guys have seen all five ways. And you should comment down below and let me know which way did you guys like the most. And you can also let me know which other ways do you have to get a formula for that. But as always, that's it. This is a bear. Are you serious? <laughs> this is a bear. <laughs> this is a ginger bear. <laughs>